The Soybean School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Pride Seeds, Ingenia Herbicide, and Cruiser Max Vibrance Beans. Hi, I'm Bernard Tobin. Welcome to Soybean School. Um, It wasn't so long ago that growers wouldn't consider planting soybeans in April, uh, but times have changed uh, as we've seen growing evidence of the benefits of planting early. Um, We've also learned the soybeans are pretty tough, and uh, when we add protection from a new generation of seed treatments, we can get some strong emergence and uniform plant stands and uh, even, you know, when spring conditions turn cold and wet. On this episode of Soybean School, we're going to talk about seed treatments and uh, how they work and uh, how they can be used most effectively. And to provide some insights on how all that happens, I'm joined by Eric Pearson. He is uh, Syngenta Canada's Seed Care Applications Lead. Um, Hi, Eric. Hey, how's it going? Good. How are you doing? Hey, I'm doing well, Eric. And hey, thanks for taking some time and uh, with us today. Um, let's start here. Um, so I'm a grower, and I'm I'm planting uh, in mid late April. The soil soil is fit, but it's cold. Um, how is that seed treatment? You know, likely a, a combination of fungicide and insecticide, going to help me get that strong plant stand? You know, uh, uh, that that stand I'm looking for. How does it work? Well, thanks for the opportunity, Bern, to to speak to you today. And um, yeah, I'm excited to talk about this because uh, seed treatments are very important to us, obviously. Um, Syngenta develops seed treatments uh, with the sole purpose of making sure that each and every seed uh, gets off to a really good start. And you mentioned a fungicide and insecticide, and that's obviously something that we have in our seed treatments to make sure that it's protected against um, soil-borne, seed-borne, and diseases or, or pests out there. You know, it's, it's very interesting, like just uh, two decades ago, ago we had a uh, single active ingredient um, uh, product, and now actually we have up to five active ingredients in, in our formulation. So it puts, it's, it's an interesting thing where we have a combination of fungicide, insecticide, different classes of chemistry. We also mix in nematicides in some cases too. It puts a lot of pressure on these seed treatment formulations. We, we also want to make sure that they work well uh, when it comes to drying of the seed treatment, we want to make sure they flow well, that our customers have a good experience when they handle the product. All these things we may want to make sure that um, basically, yeah, the customer has a good experience with, with our product. Um, seed treatment specialists often talk about the need for to keep active ingredients suspended. Um, what do you mean by that and, and how important is it? It is really important and, and thank you for bringing that up. Um, why it is important is because over time, uh, with all formulations that are suspension based, um, the active ingredient solids will over time settle out. Um, Syngenta puts a lot of time and energy and, and, and expertise into making sure that that happens as slowly as possible. So for example, we add thickening agents to kind of create a structure in the formulation to make sure it's actually uh, as stable as possible. And the, the reason why it's important is that, for example, if you're experiencing um, sedimentation of the product and you're starting your seed treatment process, you're pulling product from the bottom of the tote, you're going to get more active ingredient uh, when you start your operation and as you treat and you get to the, the top part or the, 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 the rest of the formulation that's in the, in the product, in the container, uh, you're going to get less active ingredient. What that means is that you're over-treating the first part of your treatment process and you're under-treating the last part of it, which means that you're wasting uh, product and money on the first end of it. And at the uh, second end or the last end is that you actually then don't get the protection that you're, um, that you're supposed to. So, you know, let's talk a little bit more about formulations, Eric. You know, seed treatments get applied, you know, in, in a host, by a host of different treaters uh, that operate, you know, under a wide range of conditions. How important is the formulation to help treaters do a good job, you know? And, you know, uh, you know obviously you do a lot of work with that at Syngenta. Yeah, it, it, it's really important. And I think this is where um, Syngenta... Uh, putting a lot of money, uh, resources, energy into this is also, you can see that in our products, that it stands out. It's, um, 
it is very important. Uh, my role as an application lead at the Seed Care Institute, that is my main, my chief responsibility is to make sure that customers in, in Canada have a really good experience. So um, what we do when, when we develop these formulations, either it's globally or in North America, is to test them in our lab. And I you know, sometimes joke that my role is to uh, remind our colleagues in warmer climates um, that uh, it gets cold in Canada. We get, you know, easily minus seven, uh, uh, 40 degrees uh, and our se growing season is shorter. So we need to develop these products with the purpose um, of uh, addressing those conditions, basically. So uh, in the lab, we test this, uh, obviously, from a seed safety point of view, from handling. We test it with different types of equipment for applying the product. But also we test this on planters to make sure that uh, growers have a good experience with our product. So any type of condition a seed treatment can be subjected to, if, whether it's cold or hot, humid or dry, we test that in the lab. Mm. Hey, um, any tips for growers here? And I, I'm, what I'm interested in is, you know, how evaluating their seed treatment. Is it evenly yeah. coated? Uh, is it well treated? Should they be inspecting the quality of, of, of treatment application? You know, you know how, it, how about their, their seeding treatment? You know, anything that they can do to ensure that that uh, coating is protected uh, through the planting process? Absolutely. And I think that's that is very important, um, making sure that you have good coverage on the seed. And the reason why is that some of our fungicide are contact fungicides. And, and that means that it's only active where the seed treatment is, is present. So imagine you have a seed that has parts of it not being uh, covered in seed treatment. Then if you have a uh, seed borne disease, it can obviously thrive in that environment. But if you have it properly coated all around, um, then we have much better protection in that sense. So very important to make sure that, that the coverage is good on the seed. And I have, you know, a few tips that we always think about from starting up in the season that I like to uh, share with your uh, audience is that, number one, always check the label uh, for rates and any kind of uh, first aid uh, procedures, but also look uh, at the label for perso personal protective equipment requirements, very important. And then you buy this product uh, and you want to make sure you get the very most out of it. So when it comes to uh, accuracy and consistency, there are two things that I would really recommend. One is always have a look um, to make sure your pumps are, for example, calibrated. Uh, you buy a new pump uh, and you may assume that it's calibrated and ready to go. I think it's always good to make sure that that is the case. Number two, uh, recirculate your product. So if the product has been sitting for a while, it's always a good idea to then, again, when we talk about resuspension, making sure that the active ingredients are evenly distributed throughout that formulation, um, recirculating the products uh, would be a really, really good idea. Um, and the third thing is to keep an eye on the um, seed treating process. So we know, you know, during the day, temperature goes up and down, humidity changes, your seed temperature might change. Um, just be aware of that, check to see the seed treatment quality and tweak your kind of slurry rates, or add water where needed and so on, just to make sure that you get that good coverage and so on. Awesome. Hey, Eric, um, some great tips for growers to take to the field this spring. Uh, hopefully we're going to see some planters rolling here pretty soon. I uh, want to thank you for stopping by and uh, joining us on the Soybean School. Thank you so much, Bern. 